so when did you start getting scholarships or did did you I guess move to the end of the bench before you started getting scholarships? Yeah. Uh so I got what happened was like as as I progressed um through high school I I basically wasn't good enough to go like high major division 1 which is you know like the the basically the school that people care about the right. the Big 10s right, right, right. yeah all that um so I got I got calls for the, the the one school I was close to going to was Harvard oh, who, who doesn't actually give athletic scholarships yeah. but this, the deal was like we'll let you you're you're kind of a dumbass right. but yeah. we'll let you we'll let you in because you can play basketball um so i had to like weigh that decision of my my, my dad i remember going on my dad i was like dad harvard's coaches keep calling me i'm excited to go to harvard and he's like oh that's awesome i was like the only problem is they don't really give scholarships he's like that's not quite as awesome. I don't have, <laughs> I'm a teacher's salary. I don't have right. sixty grand a year to be dishing At out. Least. Yeah, or whatever it Harvard's is. Harvard's crazy. Yeah. Uh, so, so you had like a few smaller D1 schools. In yeah, your like Indiana State. I think UNC Wilmington was one of them. Um, but I kind of, I that was never really my thing. Like I didn't love basketball that much. You brought up you earlier. Did it. You did. I, I love basketball, but like not that. I don't know how to explain it. Like at that level, it's a job. It's a you were like a commodity. They're they're taking you. They're they're owning yeah. you. They, they you were like Elena Deladon for a year when she was I, like, I can't do this. It's it, it sort of like burnout. I mean, you you, yeah. you brought it up earlier that my depression that I had like that that was part I, of it too. Uh, I didn't mean to. Okay. Well, I know it's fine, but like so kind of dealing with. I don't know. It, it was well, it was always if something. That's, if that's sorry to interrupt, but if that's all you know since you're four, I yeah. mean that's a that's a lot of burn. It's, well, it, it you have the decision like. It, in order to go to like a smaller school and play in front of a thousand people and you're not on TV and no one really cares, but you're still putting in the hours and right. more, like you have to love that. Like those yeah. guys are nuts about basketball and I loved the idea of basketball, but I don't know if I loved it that much. Right. So it was like sort of, I, I always dreamed of going to a big 10 school. My mom played basketball at Purdue. My dad went to Indiana. My, oh, cool. my older brother went to Indiana. Nice. Um, so the idea of college to me was always like a big public school. Right. Um, I, I just, I just had tunnel vision. I was like, yeah, that's, yeah. that's what I want to do right. when I go to college. Um, but I wasn't good enough. So I basically turned down like all the offers. I was like, I don't know if I want to really do that. And um, my buddies, Mike and Greg, they were, they were good enough to get scholarships to Ohio state. And so they convinced me to go, to Ohio State with them. They're like, Why, just, yeah. Well, let me ask you this. Why didn't you do like what little Romeo did and be like, tell them to make you a package deal? Well, that's kind of, that, that's kind of what ended up happening. It was, well, uh, yeah, they, but it yeah, did. Yeah. Why, did you first. try that? I, I didn't have the balls to try that, but I should have. Yeah. Because so, little Romeo basically hung on the coattails of, uh, was it, who was it? Uh, OJ Mayo? No. I forget how old he was. He, he was, uh, he, he hung on the coattails of somebody. DeMar DeRozan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. DeMar DeRozan? Something like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. I think it might have been him. Yeah, and it was like a package deal, even though Little Romeo was garbage. Yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty much what happened to me. It was like I, Mike, and Greg go to Ohio State. Greg's like, "Hey, you should come be my roommate." And I thought about, it, I was like, "That's a hell of a college experience, right yeah, there, to be roommates with like the number one player in the country." Yeah. yeah. So I, I signed up to do that. Um, they, one of the assistant coaches came to me and said, "We want you to be a manager on the team." And I said, "What does that mean?" They're like, "Well, you'll practice with the team. You'll get to like run scout team. You'll you'll do drills." I was like, "That seems pretty fun. I get to play basketball. Right. That's awesome. Why would I not do that?" And it's not serious. Yeah, and it's not serious. I don't have to go to every practice probably if I want to, you know, take a weekend off or something. How they? My folks. How were they aware of you though? Did Greg well, they, re recommend? Well, what happened was um, as they were recruiting Mike and Greg, like they would come to the the oh, AAU they games and they so would they see knew me. Of they you. knew, yeah, yeah, they knew who I was. Um, they, I, I actually knew him pretty well because I would always talk to the coaches. They would actually talk to me as they were recruiting Mike and Greg. Oh, that's like, cool. What do you think about these guys? I was like, they're, oh. they're amazing dudes. You, yeah, yeah. Oh, you that's guys great. So um, you were uh, kind of their manager a little bit. Yeah, I, I really was. So you I'm a manager. 10%. I'm a manager on the basketball team. No kidding. You know, I should bring that up to him. I'm a manager on I'll the basketball team. And uh, they tell me I'm going to be practicing, and I get there the very first day. They basically have the, the coaches have me um, wiping up sweat and filling up water bottles. And I was like, "This uh, isn't this isn't what you told sucks. me I was going to do." Yeah. So I waited the next day. Way less glamorous. Next day, I did the exact same thing. This goes on for like two weeks. I was like, "Yeah, I don't want to do this. This isn't what I signed. <laughs> I thought I was going to like practice with the team. You know? I right. thought I got to play basketball." So I quit doing that. Um, and then somebody on the team ends up. They had a couple injuries. Uh, one guy gets kicked off for grades who wasn't that good anyway. Like he, he wasn't going to class. So he gets kicked off. Long story short, they end up with nine players and they don't even have enough to play five on five. Right before the season. Right so before the season. Year. Yeah. My freshman year, I I had already quit being my manager. Yeah. Um, this was like right before October of 06. Uh, so they, they, the coaches call me and they're like, Hey, we don't have enough people to run a practice. Do you want to come practice? And I was like, yeah, sure. I guess I can help out. And I thought that was going to be basically until the guys got healthy again. 
but I must, I said something right and I made him laugh and I, I don't know, I must've been good enough. And I turned that into four years. That's amazing. Yeah. That's so, so cool. That was, that's pretty much the story. And then eventually I got a scholarship cause they had extras and yeah. So, Oh, you got a full yeah, ride yeah. later. Yeah. Oh wow. That's yeah. really great. So it worked out pretty awesome. Yeah. I, was, I anyway. told you I was a mascot at Minnesota. We didn't definitely did not get full rides, but you know, Sparty at Michigan state gets full rides. What? Motherfucker. How? It's, what is it? Because they, they're like part of the alumni. They're not student athletes. They're part of the alumni association. Oh. And the alumni like pays for their all their shit. That's ridiculous. Bullshit. That's ridiculous. Wait, so w you, I assume at some point in your youth thought you were going to play in the NBA or you wanted yes. to. Yeah. At what point did you like, did that mindset change? Uh, By the time I was a sophomore in high school, I realized I'd stopped growing because I was. You were like, yeah, it's just yeah, not going to I was 6'4 in eighth grade. I was 6'4 in ninth grade. I was like, oh, this is weird. I'm not growing, but I'm sure it'll, I'll, I'm sure it'll start <laughs> capping it again. And I was six four in tenth grade, and I was like, "Yeah, I think I'm done. I think that's it." And then, uh, yeah, I didn't have the greatest like back then. This was uh, before high school sports were taken super seriously, right. so I didn't have um, the greatest. I didn't have necessarily a nutritionist or a strength coach right, or anything right. like that, you know. So uh, as I was growing, I was like really skinny, and then I stopped growing, and I just slurred, <laughs> you know, putting on weight, and uh, I, I became a little less explosive. And I don't know. So I, I kind of figured out pretty. Yeah, pretty you quick. figured it. Because you mentioned like you didn't want to be that guy at like a small D1 school that's just putting all this time. Because I feel like a lot yeah. of those people still have to have that delusion that they're going to make the NBA. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because why else would they do it? There's there's definitely some of that. I th But some guys just love the competition. I, I honestly, like for me, the basketball part, I, I was always sort of a loner. Um, and so like I got into basketball because my dad would take me and him. We'd go to the games and it wasn't. I didn't get into basketball by way of a lot of people where they kind of go to the park and play with their friends and it's right. like a group of people. Right, right, right. I was like a loner. My dad would take me to the high school games. The games would be over. He had the keys to the gym, so he would let me shoot around by myself. Right. And that's pretty much what I did my just entire youth. Reps. So like by the time I got older, I realized, do I love basketball or do I just love shooting like, right. by myself in a gym? You know what I mean? And um, You love basketball. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very different <laughs> sport. So uh, I kind of – I you know – that kind of dawned on me was that, yeah. yeah, I think I like, I just like shooting. That's really all it is. I don't like playing defense. I don't like getting dunked on. This isn't fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather just Does stand here. like getting dunked yeah, on? Yeah, it's, it's, this isn't enjoyable. I don't like running sprints. I don't like, oh. yeah, lifting weights. No, oh. I don't need all that. I, I had a failed stint as a, as a basketball manager in high school. Yeah. And this is, I, I always say it. My dad wasn't in my life growing up. So that's why I say I have such a bad basketball shot. But they, they listen to how horrible this is. They used to – the coach in my high school, they knew I sucked at basketball. So to determine if the team ran or not, they'd have me shoot a free throw. And if I missed, oh they God. ran. That's the I worst. always missed. Yeah, Everyone right. That's hated the worst. me. That's the worst. That's like the cruelest thing I could yeah, do. Yeah, I was like, yeah. what about – I don't know what I'm doing. I'm I'm, sorry, I got like a two-hand Joakim yeah. Noah shot. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm trying to make it. Like, I'm not missing on purpose. Yeah. How ridiculous that's the worst. is that shit? That's just that's just like setting you up to be bullied. That's all it really is. It's yeah, just, right. It's just asking you to. But I out of that failed experience, I did get my nickname Box Elder because I was boxing out, and they're like, "Way to box out." That was your Box Elder. You were that guy. That was like, I don't know. They threw me in for. I have no night. idea what else I could do, so I'm just gonna <laughs> just start special elbows yeah. and, <laughs> and hope the ball ends up in my hands. That's my <laughs> hustle, man. Hustle, man. Yeah. <laughs> Every team needs one, I guess. So. Yeah, I in in their case, I was their manager. Yeah. Oh, that's so bad. I hated it. Okay, so at what point does Club Trillion come about, and where did did you have yeah. an inkling to write, or was no? It, how did so the whole the whole thing was um yeah I, so I didn't play at Ohio State really I was I was I got on the team but I I sucked so I yeah, sat but, on the bench. But to say you didn't and play is not entirely like it. You didn't play in games, but you I didn't still play in games. I had a jersey had the whole 6 time. Six a.m. workout. I pray, well, that's the that's the it's this is good for a laugh every single time if I'm at a party and someone introduces me like. Hey, have you met Mark? Because because I still live in Columbus most of the time. I'm out here in LA for a little while, right. but um, so people in Columbus still love like Ohio State everything. Right. So people will introduce me. My friends will be like, "Hey, this is this is Mark. He played basketball at Ohio State." And then every single time I say, "I actually practiced more than I played," and it <laughs> kills. And everyone's like, "Oh, that's so funny. You're so funny. I want to be friends with you." Um, so that's my little joke. Uh, but, but everyone practices more than yeah, you play, honestly. Yeah, yeah. That is, that's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> you put in so much time as a D1 athlete. So I did all the practice, but I didn't wouldn't get in the game. So what happens is I would go in for one minute usually. At the end of a blowout, we'd be up 30. They'd throw my ass in there just to run out the clock so right. no one got hurt. Because that was the year and you guys won 30-something? 30 35. So my it was freshman just blowouts year, left and right. My freshman year, we went to the Final Four, lost in the National Championship. Right. Uh, 
So, yeah, I played in a ton of games, and I would play one minute and not do anything, so the box score would look like a trillion spread right. out with one of a bunch of zeros. And so after two years of being a walk-on and this happening, um, I kind of realized I was never going to play because that first year we went to the Final Four, we had a very good team, and I was right. like, of course I'm not going to play. Like I, I was sort of out of shape still because I didn't think I was going to play in college. Right. And, but I'd worked myself into shape. Year two, we sucked. And I still wasn't playing. And that, that whole year, like, even as we're losing, we're losing four games in a row. And I'm like, coach, try me. You know, like, I'm not going <laughs> to oh, be any so worse. Oh, so you kind of Yeah. Okay. There's there like a moment where I was like, I'm not going to be any worse than these assholes. Right. Like, <laughs> throw me out there. See what happens. And he never once thought to play me. Yeah. Uh, and after that season, I realized I'm just never, like, it's never right. happening. This is who you are. And I, I kind of had the same moment of, like, is it worth it to, to do all of the off-season stuff? only to sit on the bench. And I, I had to, the, I had to like refocus my mind. It was either, cause if I was going to like let the fact that I wasn't playing, eat me up, it was going to kill me cause it's right. too much work. Right. So I decided to just sort of the way I, I dealt with it was to, to turn it on its head and make fun of the fact that I didn't yeah. play. I was like, this is the only way I'm going to get over this right. is if I have fun with it, have of aware with all of your situation, yeah. you look at it differently. So that's how club trillion came about was that me and a couple buddies that also didn't play. We started this club of guys who sucked and we made fun of ourselves. And, um, so those first two years, was this something you would recognize every time it happened when you would get in a uh, minute or not? I reckon I started recognizing my second year. My okay. first year was just like a whirlwind. It was like, I can't right. believe I'm on a good team. Yeah. This is cool to be on this team. I bet. Second year was like, we're starting to see some patterns and, and, and my buddy started making fun of me at home. Cause like, it was cool when they knew someone who was on like the final four team, right. but now that they know someone on, <laughs> now they're making fun of me. Like you can't even play on the team. It sucks. You know? Um, so it started to become like a thing that I noticed more. Uh, but yeah, so I started making fun of myself and the, the reason I got into writing wasn't because I liked writing. It was because I like telling stories and I thought, I have some funny stories from sitting on the bench and being around like a program that people care about. Right. Like Ohio state is a huge program. So you're the um, guy at the party that everyone huddles yeah. around to hear your tales. And in 2000, I think I started in 2008. Everyone had a blog. Yeah. It was hot. That was the thing yeah, that yeah. they were the podcasts of the yeah. mid <laughs> of the mid two thousands. Right. Oh yeah. So, um, that was pretty much it. Like, honestly, if I was coming up now, I probably just would have started a podcast. That's probably oh. what I would have done. Well, uh, yeah, I guess you could. Cause that's cause, but at, at the time it was just, I, I thought I have a lot of stories I want to tell. I'm not sure how to tell these stories. And then I was on Facebook and I saw one of my buddies from high school was like, Hey guys, check out my blog. And he had like, no one, no one was reading it. You know, I was thinking someone gave this guy a blog and I started like looking into what a blog actually was. And I realized, Oh, anybody can start a blog. Yeah. yeah anybody could do this. So I was like, well, why don't I do this? And that's kind of, that's pretty much how it started. And at first no one really cared. And, um, and then I forget like when the first story that got picked up was by, by local media or something. And, um, and then it was, it was really, it was really, really cool to, to see the people who didn't care that were like around me, like the, the athletic trainer at the team, right. or, like the, the managers, they were like making fun of me, like no one read your stupid shit. And then suddenly I, I kind of became someone that's and, hilarious. And then like to watch this, be like, Oh, Hey Mark, yeah, you want to, <laughs> you want to put me in your blog? And, yeah, it was pretty funny. So. I make so, fun of those guys. So I'm, people I'm are fake, even from yeah. the top of Hollywood all the way down yes. to the bottom even, of Columbus, even, Ohio. <laughs> even if you're just like a C-list celebrity, even in Columbus, Ohio, people are still that way. Yeah, that's hilarious. So how many how many like stories did you tell before it really started taking off? Mm. Was it, it? It was a fair amount, probably, right? Yeah, I mean, I must have been doing it for uh, uh, three or four months or so. Like I, I'd, I'd kind of gotten into it, um, and. And it was fun. Like I, I can honestly say I did it from a, a pure standpoint in that like there was no objective to be famous or to be noticed or anything like that. It was just right. this was fun to me. I enjoyed I thought I had a fun personality. I thought uh all, all my teammates were hilarious. Like the stuff that went on behind the scenes was so funny yeah. to me. And I was like, I, I this is just fun. I just want to document this somewhere. Right. I, That's I thought, how I feel about this podcast. Yeah, like when I'm older if you're passionate about something, start yeah. it. Yeah. So Who cares I, if I was like, when I'm 80 it. years old, it'll be fun to look back on yeah. this and laugh at just some for of the yourself. Stuff. Yeah. So I started from a pure spot and then, um, yeah. And then just suddenly it just sort of exploded out of nowhere and I just kind of like couldn't handle it. But were you a decent writer at first? Do you think looking no, back? No, 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 no. Cause you didn't, did you do anything creative in high school outside of uh, basketball? Was it just basketball? It was pretty much just basketball. Okay. I mean, I always had like a creative mind. Like I always, I, I loved comedy <laughs> and I love thinking of funny things. Yeah. Such like a I, great com yeah, comedic a, mind. Yeah. Great, great mind. Great mind of mine. Well, I, I say that from the standpoint of like I remember being around like basketball guys and thinking like all my teammates are dumb and like right. thinking this my entire life. Right, right, you know? right. I so like that. I that's what I mean. Just is I would go to I would go to movies and I would I would watch movies that 
I don't I don't know. And you're like, this, I get this. This, this is very me. much a douche comment. <laughs> though, it's like you sort of realize that you're an outcast, like on basketball teams. You're like, there's like I, I, I'm, no, I I'm, I'm drawn to certain things that they aren't. And um, so but yeah, I never took like, you know, I was never really like the, the nerd who was taking nerdy stuff <laughs> in, in high school no uh I, yeah i never i never really did music i never did acting or anything like right. that like to, i never really had that sort of creative outlet so right mm. so you so you get all this traction with club trillion you finish uh school yeah what 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 was the book like people throwing book offers at uh, you or was that something that you were like i should turn this into a book because you had a, it was i don't know 100 blog entries or something probably yeah i had i had a lot of blogs so i, I i'm trying to remember what the pay i think by by the time i would i was at the peak i think i was getting like a hundred thousand page hits a day on the blog um which i felt like a ton i think that's a, still that was a, a ton. ton yeah it still is and because I, I wasn't even posting it every day i wasn't like trying to monetize it right. or anything like that because by the way i couldn't you make couldn't money. monetize it. yeah i couldn't monetize it there was no like advertising yeah it was just sort of word of mouth and at the time it was kind of interesting that people were hearing from the guy on the end of the bench and right. it's probably not as interesting now um no i still think it is yeah people I, like I, I access do too. that's I do too. I, yeah I, it's a unique access type of thing where that's why people love behind the scenes stuff or like uh, those yeah. those NFL videos where they're mic'd right. on the field because right. it's access. So it's just this was, unique access. This was pre Twitter too, by yeah. the way. So that whole thing didn't exist. Like this was if you wanted to know like what's going on in the world of college basketball players, I was kind of the guy. Yeah. Like I represented all of college basketball <laughs> yeah. almost because like you never heard from the the only time you heard from the players was on ESPN. And right. they get the microphone. Like how'd you play out there? And they're like, good. Yeah. And then that's you know like that's all you thank God. All right. Yeah. Thank God. That's that's pretty much it. So um, they never answered. I the knew question. that I knew there was an audience for. It, uh the 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 audience certainly wanted like a book because i think there I, I was reserved sort of knowing that i didn't want to get kicked off the team so i didn't want to tell certain stories when i was right. playing and i was and now that i'm free i've i've got the, the chains off of yeah. me i can tell whatever stories i want because so, you you told a lot of pretty honest stories if i recall yeah the book got a little more vulgar and and yeah raunch <laughs> well and you called out teammates and stuff yeah for yeah, things. yeah i i let i let every teammate that i called out i let them read the story before i published it oh that's good yeah so like i gave them the okay and the one teammate uh who I, I i can't remember i think i named his name but i'm not i can't remember so i'm not gonna name him <laughs> now. but if i did in the book you i should I don't remember give but me that exclusive one of the teammates i wrote uh, uh the story about how he was he he brought a girl into. Oh, that was Evan Turner. Was that Evan Turner? It was no. Oh, you're, I see what you're doing. Yeah, I see what you. Uh, I see what you're doing. I see it. It's it, all of them are Evan Turner. By the way, <laughs> let's just go with the assumption that every single one of these stories is Evan Turner. Um, he I was I was I was forced to room with one of my 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 teammates and uh I was I was asleep in the bed and he we're we're basically there's two beds i'm in one of them falling asleep he's in the other one and then i hear a noise and i wake up and he's getting oral sex from classic uh, yeah <laughs> and i remember thinking that was like the most absurd thing i'd ever seen in my life because like i was kind of a i lived like a sheltered life yeah just, you know i don't know in like, the gym at midnight, i don't mean i don't alone. mean i you know i'm not like a, a a lonely virgin type but it was like you know if you're gonna get with a woman maybe be by yourself i don't know that's kind of traditionally how, that was how i was raised <laughs> yeah. like maybe <laughs> keep it behind closed doors don't be you know to bed right next to it so i I thought it was hilarious and I, I wrote the story and I sent it to him and I was like, Hey, do you think, you know, like, I'm really sorry if this offends you, but I feel like this, this is a good story. People will love it. And I was waiting for him to like, want to kick my ass. And he just starts smiling. He's like, this is awesome. Ah! He's like, this is the greatest. He's like, you got to put that in there. This is awesome. And I'm sure I put his name in there, but I, I, I don't remember. But um, so as you were doing, as you were doing yeah. club trill, were you, were you planning the book where you had, did you have the foresight? I didn't for start that? planning the book until like right at the end of my senior year. Okay. I realized I could write a book. Yeah. Cause I, I, I didn't have like publishers throwing stuff at me, they, but they, it was, never, they didn't. I had well, eventually I did, yeah. Okay. Like when I made it known, I was. I, I mean, I hired an agent, and the agent went out, and you know, and then, oh. I, then I got a bunch of book offers after that. But at the time, it wasn't like I was fielding calls from um, publishers or anything. But I knew, I knew I had an audience. I had right. a ton of people were like, "You dude, you should write a book." That and you got to awesome. monetize yeah. it, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 